Dang, I appreciate okay. that. Okay. Okay, what's Listen. Up? Listen. This is just you. Dude, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's so good. No, no. Yeah. Game three, two, one. Alrighty then. What is up? How's it going? How's it going? How's it going? How's it going? It's going well. Dude. It's better now that I'm with you. Dude, thank you. I appreciate that. What's up, guys? Welcome to the podcast again. And right here, right now, I'm here with the one and only Bry Guy. Woo. Woo. How are you doing, Brian? You know, you doing I, good? Uh, yeah, I'm doing good. It's a good day today. Good day nice. today. Yeah, weather's Can't nice. I'm um, wearing a nice hoodie. Yeah, I forced Brian to wear the hoodie because <laughs> I was just like, Brian, we've been wearing hoodies for like the past three podcasts. We might as well keep it like that. It's only 93 degrees outside. <laughs> but yeah, I know. What's up? Let's go. <laughs> um, anyways, so um, I just wanted to welcome you to the podcast. How do you feel? What do you think of this? Have you ever done something like this? No. No? No, so it's kind of weird, and it's really weird that I get to hear myself. I kind of didn't like it. <laughs> you didn't like <laughs> <Yeah>. it? <laughs> no, but it, it's, it'll be fun. It's like, I uh, actually hate myself. <laughs> I'm in good hands, so. Oh, what's up? My yeah. dad works for Allstate, and I work for Allstate, too. I used to. Is it sponsored by Allstate? No, but okay. uh, I wish. <laughs> I need the money. I need the money. <laughs> uh, anyways, welcome. Um, I just wanted to say thanks for popping in to my place. We're actually in my room this time, shooting the podcast. Um... Because I was like, if we go to a Mexican household, <laughs> your, your household, it's going to be so loud. Because I know how Latino families are. No one was I'm home. Latino. I'm Latino. No one was home. Really? Yeah. Oh, We well. could have done that at my house, actually. Really? Do you yeah. think it would have been better? Um, I don't know. Because I'm Latino and my house is loud. Like, I, dude, my room is like the furthest room from everywhere in the house. Yeah. And everyone still make like I could still make hear noises and it's freaking scary. That no, is. listen. Uh, I mean, and annoying. it was quiet. But oh, right. I mean, the outside. Someone. I think when I left, someone was like bumping some like norteña, like something. <laughs> hey, I was digging it actually. <laughs> exactly, and that's why we're doing it here. Well, actually, North Hollywood's no different. <laughs> right, especially your North Hollywood. Yeah, my North Hollywood's no different at all. Yeah. Anyways, um, so little things to know about Brian. Brian is actually the first roommate I ever had in oh, Los dang. Angeles. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, did you to remember that? that? Right? Yeah, yeah of course I was I looking I was that. looking at your old videos mm -hmm. and um I just remember looking at the couch in those videos. I was like, there's my bed. <laughs> like, there's my bed. I got you so sentimental. You invaded our living room. Yeah, I know. And I remember just like looking there. I was like, I actually don't miss it as much because during so I crashed at your place during it's kind of like winter time. Like that's when I finally like came came uh, in. No, it was fall. It was like I mean, fall you came winter. And then you left. Yeah, and one of the things that Brian would always do, he would leave like the the my couch. Well, our couch, your couch, no, your couch, <laughs> would be right next to like the the what is it called the balcony. Yeah. And so you would leave the door open in the balcony, and so every morning I would wake up with my toes freezing, like just like icicles on my toes, and it was like the worst experience ever. So now I'm very grateful for this bed, <laughs> and um, nonetheless a bed. Like, yeah, you were sleeping. It was one of those IKEA couches that becomes a, a bed, um, and I've slept in one of those once. Yeah, and it was comfortable, but it was once. Yeah, once you were there for like months yeah like six so, months yeah six months so it's crazy. I, I don't blame you but thank you happier. for giving me a place to stay because brian's the only one who's giving me a place to stay like he's he, you're the one who enabled me to live in la like you're the reason I why you i clothed you and i gave you a place to sleep yeah you actually did feed me a lot of times <laughs> that's that's not that's not false that's not yeah, false at true. all yeah i didn't um, clothe you did yeah, i probably did I, I mean i didn't you know <laughs> did i give you any Thing to wear is what I'm maybe anyway. when I was on my nights out, maybe you had to, you know, clothe yeah. me anything. Anyway, all right. Anyways, now anyway. to the next thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're my Latino brother. You're the only person that I actually like speak Spanish to over here out in LA. That was fun. I really actually enjoyed you and Kian are the only people I speak Spanish to. Oh, he speaks Spanish. Yeah, he speaks Spanish. Surprisingly, you should try. Oh, because you told me. Yeah, but he, anyway, um, story for next. Anyway, yeah. Anyway. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, no, I really enjoyed uh, being able to speak Spanish to you and uh, sort of towards the end of our time together, mm -hmm. we would watch, we started watching Spanish movies. So yeah. We had movie night, oh which is really gosh, fun. Oh my gosh, those are the nights. Oh my gosh, yeah. I miss that so much. Brian would get home at like, he would just get home and he'd be like, you want to watch a Spanish movie? And I'd be like, yeah, sure. 
And we'd find like these urban, like, I don't know, like these Just indie random, classics. Yeah. And they were good movies. Mm-hmm. They weren't bad movies. They were really good. That Argentinian movie that we watched, the one with like the superstar, like, uh, model, and then like this nerdy guy that dated her. Oh, yeah. That was one of my favorite. And Madre. Remember Madre? Oh, Madre was good. I was very scared of that movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, got- we had some really good times. And again, it's, it's just nice to like be able to practice Spanish. Yeah. And I miss that a lot. I miss that yeah. a lot. Um, but yeah, dude, you're getting married soon. I am. Dude, how do you feel about that? You know, I feel great. I feel, I think what's crazy, what's awesome about it, I don't even know what word to use, <laughs> is that like, it's like the unknown. Um, you know, it's awesome like being in a relationship that um, is so intimate in this way. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's crazy to think like this is a person that I'm going to spend my whole life with yeah and even uh, like uh understanding like i don't even know it's like i don't even know what to say or how to say but it's like wow that's insane and there's so much more to it but i feel excited i can't wait to be with her especially because we're long distance yeah so once we marry it's like we're like we say bye to long distance yeah um in that sense and so we'll be able to like we spend so much I wish I kept like a like running timer of how many times we speak on FaceTime really excuse me oh yeah and all of that like we'll be done with that and you know granted I'm sure like here and there we'll text or whatever yeah. but it'll be different yeah, yeah. so Dude, looking forward to that that's so insane you're taking she's taking me she's taking you away from me <laughs> <laughs> friends like my older brother if that's that's our relationship that we have like I remember when I came back from uh the holidays I forget when it was but I remember you saying you're getting married. Yeah, you're 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 leaving me. Yeah, really. I think I think you said that when no I came way. Back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Was that like right after you met Pippa or what? I don't remember. I just remember. Oh yeah, yeah. That's when I came back from that summer when I first met her. Really? And you're like, oh, like it's done for. It, yeah. I remember because just seeing you how passionate you were about mm-hmm. talking to, about her, I was mm-hmm. just like. All right, I'm third wheeling again. Here we go. Signing up. <laughs> Dude, literally, ev- all my friends, all my friends on the third wheel now. Like, I hate it. But yeah. I want to actually talk about that, the third mm. wheeling aspect. Mm. Yeah. Because um, this is going to be a hard, uh, this is going to be like a heavy question. And so I actually want a full answer from you. I'm, I hope you're like, it's not a hard question. I just hope you're prepared for this question. It's not a hard question, <laughs> but I hope you're prepared. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, actually, I actually really want to know your insight on this because you're okay. someone that... Um, you're just someone that I always uh, seek advice from. Mm-hmm. We've had these conversations before. Like yeah. when we were, we always, for some reason, we always go to this bar in North Hollywood called El Tejano. And we're like, yeah, let's have a fun night. We'll have like margaritas and like chips and tacos. And then we'll go from a fun night to having like a really deep conversation. Always. Always. And it's really funny because by the end of the night, I'm just like, I love you. I love you too. <laughs> and so. And it's not the margarita. Yeah, it's not. It's not the, <laughs> no, I swear. It's not the margarita. I love you, man. I love, I love you, man. Too. Um, but That's a good movie, by the way. I love that movie. Really? Anyway, yeah. Side note. It's a good movie. I've seen yeah. it before. Yeah. I like that movie. But yeah, I just wanted to ask you these. Well, I guess I really thought out my questions this time because I really just wanted you're someone I look up to in the aspect of just like wisdom. And uh, I don't mean to put that pressure on you or anything like that in the <laughs> podcast. You're like, oh my gosh, am I going to say the right thing? But like, I just really um, I admire how invested you are in your relationship with God. I admire how invested you are in your relationship with your friends and how how specific you are to making friendships because you're not someone who, and it's not a bad trait. It's a really good trait because you have an eye of discernment and you know who to actually invest time in and who to pour into. And I'm blessed and I'm so lucky that I'm one of the people that you pour into. And so that's why I want the whole world to know about you. And uh, what's up? Let's go. (laughs) But uh, yeah, let me ask you the first question. First of all, thank you for just saying those things. I can't, I don't even know, like, it's like it's like you know words of affirmation which is so hard for me sometimes to like Except swallow if you will same and it's like i can't believe that there would be people or in this case you mm-hmm. just you and that all that that's all that matters like you know after you know the one mm-hmm. type thing and uh and that you would see me in that way it's just all all i'm saying essentially is thank you no and, worries um you know dude anyway. thank you honestly <laughs> thank you Anyways, are you ready? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. All right, here we go. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm not good with words of information either. <laughs> I'm just like, thank you, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. But uh, here's my first question for you. Um, so what piece of advice, this this goes within our relationship, this question, because it's something that um, I think I want to learn from, and I think something that 
uh, many people want to learn from because it's something that most people my age are dealing with. So here's the question. What piece of advice would you hand down to someone like me in my singleness? What would you tell me to take advantage of? What should I learn from this season? And what should I prepare myself for in this season? Okay, what's the first question? So the first question is, well, obviously the advice piece, what piece of advice? So the first question of advice would be, what would you tell me to take advantage of in my season of singleness? Um, it depends on like how you see it. If you see it from a biblical standpoint, I think um, even as Paul says, like we are meant to do what God has called us to do in our time of singleness. Because mm-hmm. when we are single, you really have nothing else to worry about except for yourself. Yeah. And in that you really have the time, the resources to you invest in people. You go on mission trips. Yeah. You go well. Uh, was it dug a well? Yeah. Um. You there's so much that you can do with the time that you have on your hands and use it wisely. Um. But at the same time, it's like, you know, we are meant to live our life to the fullest and enjoy. Mm -hmm. And, um, my advice would just to. Just in a way, like do you, but seek God in doing and what it means to do you, because we're not here for ourselves. We're here for him, for his purpose in bringing his kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Um, Outside of like the biblical standpoint, I guess all I would say is just have, be responsible, have fun. But in my, in my experience, at least, I I, I never, for me, it was the unbiblical, like there was no, no difference really. So I guess that was kind of a convoluted answer, but essentially for me, like the way I did it, I just, I saw how I could use my time, um, and, and, uh, invest into others. Cool. So when I graduated, um, uh, high school, I became a youth worker and that may look different for people, but you really have a lot of time to invest in others, to grow in your walk, um, to read the word, you know, all those typical sort of Christian things. Cool. Uh, so that would be my advice. Just use your time wise, time wisely because you never get it back. Dang, it's that's a, gift. a good answer. Yeah, that's a really good answer. And that's not in a way like, oh, I'm not going to speak to you because my time is valuable, which it is. You're valuable. But yeah. just as that person that you're saying that to is also just as valuable. Mm-hmm. And it's like you're going after the one just as Jesus did. Yeah, exactly. It's about, yeah, totally. Dang, that was such a good answer. That's why I wanted you on the podcast. Done? Yeah. Am I done? <laughs> just kidding. All right. No, thank podcast you. Podcast over. <laughs> and that's just my opinion. Yeah. I will say. Um, and I guess the next question that goes like right after that, it's like, what should I learn from this season? What's something I should learn from? Like, I think I will say like, I, um, I think right now also the other thing about being single is sometimes, and what's been awesome about being in a relationship is that sometimes a lot of the times you come to realize how many things you've not dealt with. Yeah. And so I think, um, even in your singleness and I wish somehow when I was younger, someone would have come into I think so seeking like a mentor someone Mm -hmm. who can really speak into your life and help you in your walk and have you say hey Sebastian slow down how are you feeling what are you thinking Mm -hmm. um what you know all those things on on the self-discovery of who Sebastian is yeah so I would say I think that would be my answer is that, that in this time also that you would stop and and really sort of dig deep not so much as you're like in your head and you're stuck and you're like ah i'm the worst i suck or whatever it is but really seeking deep and seeing like oh cool when i was i don't know making this up five someone told me to shut up and so now i'm you're not 25 but now Mm. i'm 25 and anytime someone says shut up i get extremely mad so sort of dealing with those things that you've not dealt with yeah and because then you take that into a relationship whoa that's crazy i think one of the cool things that you mentioned is like uh take advantage of looking for someone who can be your mentor. And the first time I experienced that, or like not mentorship from you, but it was more like you questioned my decisions was literally when I gave my life to Christ. I was just like, all right, I gave my life to Christ. What's up? I'm so happy. I get into your apartment. He was so happy. I was so happy. I was just like, I don't know what I did, but I feel good about it. And then uh, you like, we drive home from church. Jess and Gabriel were there when I got saved Mm -hmm. and you were there. You were serving at the time which is insane. Yeah. And uh, I remember you drove me back to your old place, not the place that I crashed at. It was another apartment. We were at the kitchen and you just said, so why'd you do it? And I was like, do what? Do what? (laughs) You're like, why'd you raise your hand up? Like, why'd you ask to get saved? And I was like, damn it. (laughs) Good question. (laughs) And, uh, but it's through those questions, I think that you taught me to question others um, and question other people's intentions and motivations. 
Um, because I think your questioning has really taught me how to um, not really just um, figure more about myself, but figure uh, figure out more about other people and like learn more about people within relationships. Mm. Because I think it's through questions that you get to build stronger bonds with people. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that we did. I think it's your questioning. That's literally, actually, it was that. Because I remember the day, the day before I left, I actually said, thank you for questioning me on why I rose my hand up. Yeah. We were yeah, at a subway. And it was like my last day. And you were just, I was just like, dang, I didn't even realize like what I jumped into. I mm -hmm. thought it was like something easy <laughs> to do. Yeah. And you made me, real. not that you were like, dude, it's going to suck. <laughs> but you're like, it's going to be like, it's not going to be an easy path. But you were very reaffirming that it's going. It was the right path, you know. Mm -hmm. So I thank you for that. Oh, I thank you for that. Of course, dude. This is awesome. I'm having such a good time. Okay, <laughs> here's an, here's the last question of this like section. Um, what should I prepare myself for in the season of singleness? Oh my gosh, I think um, what you should how what what Is should it? I prepare myself for in the season of singleness? Uh, that's a I. I don't know that I can answer that one because I think it goes back to <clears throat> what uh, did you prepare yourself for in your season of singleness? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I know, don't know what I've been doing my whole life. <laughs> I think, I think, you know, um, just, I think, I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like it would be like living, it, this sounds so Christian, but really just living out my life for Christ and what does that look like on yeah. a practical level mm -hmm. and not being and if you are like a cheesy or uh, why well, I'm cheesy but a crazy I don't know <laughs> you're a good I, cheesy yeah thank you um I, I don't know that, that's a that's a hard question I don't know I think if if you're I think it just depends on context I mm -hmm. think if you are um thinking of if, if you're if your heart desire is to get married then uh, there's really you can never be prepared I think you can take steps um to go into whenever marriage is. Mm -hmm. um, but if your vision, if you have the gift of singleness, which singleness is a gift yeah. um, in itself, like then, I don't know, it, it, it's such a hard question and I think that that depends. I think that's part of the self-discovery. Like yeah. what are you preparing yourself? What is, because then the thing At is- At the end of the day, it's like, what are you pursuing? What's your passion and what's your calling? And, and how does that line up more importantly to what God is saying? Exactly. So I don't know that I could answer so did you prepare yourself for anything when you were single? You know, when I was single, I just lived my my life. Again, I served. I was at one church, uh, this particular church rather, uh, for about seven to eight years. Yeah. And I really was sold out for, mm -hmm. for serving in the ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, I loved on these kids. I was a youth worker to middle school uh, kids. And I gave my resource, my time, money, mm -hmm. um, well, those two things, um, for for them, and I made myself available. Um, so I was doing that. I was going to school and I was working. Yeah. And uh, what made you choose a youth? The church I was going to was very, very big on serving. So mm -hmm. serve. I think every, I feel like every church is. Um, but I think I had just graduated high school. I wanted to serve in the high school grade, but then uh, the pastor at that point suggested I do junior high, just because I was, I had just. At that time, when I graduated, I was 17. Mm -hmm. So anyway, he just had me go and serve into ministry. And then a leader came and I grew. And it was just a wonderful time and really investing. Um, and through that, uh, as I've been talking to um, to Pips, and like, it's crazy how through that, God has really taught me what it means to be um, adopted into the family. Because in that, um, I I'm invested my time in these four kids, if I remember correctly, and I met their families the well, families welcomed me in and there's still one family that I, I just came back from their house. Today. Really? I spent Whoa. the night there and amazing people. And so I don't know that I had a specific, like I wasn't there at age, I mean, let's make this up, 21 saying, okay, today I'm being prepared for um, marriage in whatever time. Yeah. Um, I think I was I was going to school. I wanted to graduate. I was focused in the, the here and now versus the like trying to get- Your focus in your current season. Yeah, and um, just every season was different, um, both spiritually and on the practical, work-wise, professional level. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to graduate. I had dreams and aspirations, and I was submitting to, okay, God, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm doing. Lead, lead the way. Whoa. So yeah, that makes sense. If that makes sense, again, that's it's unique to each. It's individual. unique to each person. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really good, dude. 
All right, let's go. I like this. Next question, please. Yes, please. <laughs> okay, so talking about like singleness and all that stuff, um, obviously- Patient. Just for the record, I was yeah. single forever, yeah. which is why he's so focused on singleness. Yeah, but that's the thing. Like, I want to learn from someone who's experienced like a lot and gone through a lot. And for some reason, I'm just like, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna be single for a long Look, time. Uh, I have a feeling. Because- let's just make the like this clear. Like, if you are single, if you are t- watching this and you're 25, if mm-hmm. you're watching this and you're 21, if you're watching this and you're 29, whatever age you are, if you're watching this and you're 15 and you're single, like. Let me just say, chill out. Enjoy your singleness. Honestly, like, singleness is so... The the church doesn't, like, the church and the culture doesn't really uh, encourage for you to have a a, a healthy single life. And it's always like, you know, my parents always did it. Probably your parents do it yeah. and your parents do it. It's like, hey, wh- are you dating someone? Are you yeah. seeing someone every single time or any That's family so member? True. And it's like, can you stop projecting that on me, please? Like, I'm chilling. I'm enjoying my life. Exactly. Let me do me in the sense, like, I'm just... It's funny how, like, even the church, right? And this is not criticizing it yeah, at, all. at all. This is not criti- uh, criticizing. I just find this funny. It's like, because there's a lot of churches, like, pull jokes and they're like, all right, who's single here? Raise your hand up if you're single. I'm just like, me, like, all right, yeah, I'm pointing myself out. But it's funny because one of the people we look up to the most in the Bible was one of the most influential people in the Bible, and that's Paul. Paul was single his whole life. And we're like, wow, Paul's so wise. He's single, and he, like, writes all these things. And then, like, the church is like, well, you got to get married because that's a, you know. Yeah, and so I think that that's where, that's a miss for the church. I think the church doesn't talk about, hey, enjoy your singleness. And if you are married, awesome. If you're single, like, enjoy it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So talking about patience. And the reason why I want to talk about patience is because the funny thing between us two, before you met Pippa, which is his fiance now, um, we, we would, uh, there was a time where Jess, Gabriel, you and I were like searching for churches in LA <laughs> yeah. and every church we went to, like every other church, the first, like the, whatever the message was, it was on singleness. Yeah. I remember one church we went to, like, I think it was Saddleback. They had even like like note cards where you had to check off everything about your singleness. And I was just like, this freaking sucks. I was I like, remember that, yeah. and even now, like, um, even now, like I've, I've come to learn that like, dude, I got to appreciate my singleness, you know, like I got to, but okay. Here's like a more intimate question, intimate question. Did you feel like you were going to be single for a long time or were you just like, ah, whatever. Uh, there were, de- <laughs> there were definitely moments in my lifetime where I think I remember I had a, a, I was 17 and I called a then friend and I was like, Hey, I'm just afraid. I'm scared. I don't know which word afraid, Mm -hmm. scared that I'm going to be single for the rest of my life. And he said to me, he's like, Hey Brian, uh, God knows the desires of your heart. Um, and I'm like, okay, cool. (sighs) Making this up age 21. I'm still single, you know, age 23. I'm still single 25. I'm still single. And it's like, um, so yeah, I definitely had moments where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be, I'm just going to die single. <laughs> so that's it. I'm Same. done. But I, I think I came to a place, I was always trying to come to a place of being okay with being single mm-hmm. and not wanting to force anything or be with someone. And, you know, I also went through a season where I probably went to four weddings in one year and I'm like, okay, God, I get it. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Right. So you're just like, I don't want to like, can, I don't want to go to another wedding right now. Yeah. But even through that, right, I guess one of the things, the reason I'm asking this is like the confusion of searching, right? Because, you know, we all search, we all want a partner Mm -hmm. in some, not everyone, but Mm -hmm. like some people, majority of people want to search for a partner. So when you're searching, right, how do you, how do you check your heart even when you're searching? Because you could be like, someone could check off everything. Like she reads the Bible. She like helps other people. She baptizes people. She goes to church and all that stuff. Oh my God. And you're just like, (laughs) right. And then like, you're like, Oh my gosh, she's everything I need. And then like, how do you know, how do you make the difference between someone that is the one than someone who just like checks out everything because of your own desires? I think I don't believe in the one. Yeah. I believe that, um, you could potentially end up with whomever it is it's who are you most compatible with mm-hmm. um but i believe that god will direct your steps in such a way that um the person that is more most compatible because obviously we see, we read that adam had a partner that was m- most suitable for him mm-hmm. and um i think god knows for both male and female like who is uh, you're most compatible with and I look at Pippa and I, and it's like, it's crazy how much we are so compatible and we complement each other. Dude, you guys are so compatible. In, in many ways. And it's like, 
I, and so I think that's like in meeting and being with Pips, and it's like, yeah, it was the wait was so worth it. Yeah, because well, I don't know, I don't know that I would have ended up with anyone else type thing. Like, yeah. or what dating would have been, um, but I don't know if I, I know no, you're, I lost you're what answering. The question was. No, you, you're uh, you're answering. So uh, the one, and then like someone who just checks off things. And I, you said you didn't believe yeah, I one. think like. I th- I don't know. That's a that's also another hard question because I think it's so subjective to the individual. Yeah. Um. Because you have to check your heart and you have to. Am I? You'll never be ready, but am I ready? What are my intentions? What do I want out of this? And it's like you have to make sure that your heart is so aligned. I know we're talking. This is like Christian one 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 or something. Yeah. But Christianese one one. Christianese one one. But like you have to be so aligned and versus being like I need someone mm-hmm. and it's like no you don't need someone you're perfectly fine relying on god and yeah. i think that when you reach that point um that's a better best point i, I would say that's probably the, the place best that answer you want to be yeah you want to be is fully reliant on god and not someone not have someone come and be your god yeah be the replacement it's god then do you think it's partner. about do you think it's about feeling ready or just being like no like at the end of the day like i think you'll know um, okay. So for me, on both ends, I think for me, I just knew. And it was really, I, I always heard people say, it was so cliche, but I always heard people say, you'll know when you'll know. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you talking <laughs> you're about? Like, you're how such will, a liar. How, how will you know? <laughs> and, and people would just say, you'll know. And I'm like, okay, great. I'm like, shut up. All yeah, right. yeah. I'm and like, I went pips and I knew. Really? And it was, uh, but it's funny because um, in that moment, like I was also, um, What's the word? I was like, God, no, it can't be this easy. Yeah. Granted, I had waited forever, but I was like, still, God, it can't be this easy. So I was in denial. But yeah, like I would say when you know, you know, and that sounds so foreign, just like God may sound foreign to people, but it's like you have to have that experience. (sighs) That's so fire. But um, you'll know when you know. And, you know, the thing is like, there are like, there's nothing wrong with Mm -hmm. dating. Again, it's just like, I don't know that, 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 that can get messy, but um, Dang, that was good. Because I, I think there's two sides to it where, you know, there's people who believe in dating, which mm-hmm. is fine. And there's people who like, believe in I'm marriage. Just, I'm just waiting for the one, which yeah. you're not really waiting for the one you're waiting for. Yeah. You know, I, that that word is very, it goes, I was reading this book called Loveology. Um, <laughs> but he talks about how uh, back in the day, like Plato and all these, um, uh, uh, what are they called? Um, philosophers philosophers talked about like the one your better half yeah. this whole idea of my the, the my want the person who you you need in your life and, mm-hmm. and that doesn't in the kingdom language doesn't it really exist well um, he goes into it so if you want to read that book I would definitely I will that. link it down below um, also another thing about patience um, I think one of the things I actually wanted to ask you is how do you teach yourself patience in times of anxiety or depression or or anger, like what things in life have taught you about being patient and how to build upon it. Uh, I would just say that the the living uh, with me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I think let me tell you about that. It's honestly, like I would just say, like waiting on the Lord, and that sounds so Christian easy. That, but so much easier said than done, and just waiting and just like slowing down. Yeah. Um. But sometimes, again, that's much easier said than done because I had moments where I wasn't patient. I'm yeah. not, I can be a patient person, but sometimes, like, I've had moments where I've not been patient. Dude, you've been so patient with me. And I think, yeah, um, definitely. But in, in other areas, like, I remember I, uh, job wise, I, I, an opportunity came, I was impatient, I took it, and it turned out to be a learning experience, but I was only there for five months. So, how do you discern between knowing? your promise and of being patient than just taking like the opportunity right there. Like, how do you know, I guess my question is like, how do you know when to make the right decision between being impatient and being patient? Like what if being patient makes you like, you know, doesn't give you like what you were expecting compared to being like, okay, I got to grab this opportunity. I think you now. just have to ask questions. Cause I think if you're impatient, you're, you're not thinking straight. Just like when you're mad, you're not mm-hmm. thinking straight. Um, and I think like, you mentioned it depression um and it's all these like um these in the sense like mental health issues sometimes mm-hmm. we think about like your uh the physical health right mm-hmm. so i'm working out because i need to be physically uh uh well i need to eat well because i need to be physically well or um you think of i don't know what other health wise but there is an element about the the brain and sort of how you think and process which i'm not no expert in but uh, I, I think 
there I think this is where community comes into play right mm-hmm. and and you're able to voice and talk about what patients look, looks like I couldn't tell you what patient looks like I I don't people say Patience. I'm a patient person you but, are so patient but I have no idea I, I have no idea where or why that Let me tell you where you got it from. You got it from me. Like you, a whole chunk of patients came from like being single and then another chunk of patients came from those six months living with me. And that me. happens in waiting, right? Yeah. I waited. And mm-hmm. with you, I, 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 I was like, Sebastian, can you do this? Yeah. And I waited. Yeah. You know? And so there's a lot, there's something good in the waiting. Yeah. That's something so that true. That's so true. And sometimes you get impatient, which is fine. Yeah. And then you just get back on track. Yeah, that's Something true. Like that. Even like in the in your areas of being impatient, you just got to be like, you know what? I'm just going to chill. Take it easy. Take it easy. And I'm just going to not burst out on anyone and uh, be a good person. And I think at the end of the day, I, I really love like, that's something I've been learning also, just being patient. Like, especially like, um, like, okay, like here's one of the weird things about me. So one of the things I've learned about being patient uh, is actually getting my car because I really want a car. I don't have a car out here in LA. I was going to say, you got a car? No, I don't. And I really want to get, like I'm supposed to get one this month, but one of the hard things for me that I've been learning is patience because um, insurance out here is super high. And the fact that I'm, a fr- I'm from New York, so I have a different driver's license. Mm-hmm. So just this whole ordeal, like getting insurance here has been really hard. Dude, it costs more than my lease on my car, like my insurance, which is really annoying. Yeah. But um, that whole patience thing, Sometimes it's like waiting through the pay, like the greatest value or the greatest gift I've learned about being patient is seeing the fruit that comes within it while you're in that motion of in that season of patience. Because many people think like, oh, you got to be patient and then you'll see something actually ha-. like if you get it's hard to explain. But like I feel like so many people say like the fruit from being patient comes at the very end during like during that season of patience. But what I've been able to learn is like actually I've seen a lot of fruit like happen in my season of patience so it hasn't been like oh i've been patient i waited i waited i waited i waited and then something awesome came it's like i saw little gifts Mm -hmm. happen Mm -hmm. even in my seasons of patience and that's uh and what i mean by that is so a weird thing about me to know is like my ministry is in ubers so um the one thing (laughs) one, one of the things i'm gonna miss a lot is actually going on ubers once i get my car because and maybe if I go on a night out, like maybe I'll start. You can be an Uber driver, dude. I don't want. To. <laughs> Heck no, dude. The stories I've heard about like Uber yeah, drivers yeah, is yeah, just yeah. like not like yeah. not what I want to do. But um, yeah, like uh, so weird thing about me is actually I within the week I pay for like three or four Uber drivers, mm-hmm. which is insane. It's mm-hmm. insane. I just don't know why it happens, but like I just like preaching the gospel in uh in my Uber. And the reason why it happens, honestly, is because. The only time I use Uber is either I'm heading to a friend's house to like film something or I'm heading to church. And so people are always like, the Uber driver's like always like, oh, where are you heading to? I'm like, oh, I'm heading to church. And I say it like I slip it in a little bit and then they start asking questions and then like I just start talking. By the end, they're just like, can you pray for me? And I'm like, yeah, I'd love to pray for you. Yeah. And that's the fruit that I've seen like in my waiting, you know, Mm -hmm. and To be honest, I don't even know if, like, the fruit I'm going to receive, like, after being patient, like, with this car I'm going to get, like, I don't even think it's going to be as as amazing as the fruit that I see right now, Hmm. because I really love, like, I just love meeting new people, and I just love um, having the opportunity and the privilege to have someone open up to me in the series, because most most car rides are around, like, for me, around 15 to 25 minutes, and it's crazy how, like, within those 15 to 25 minutes, someone can go from being like, hey, how's your day? Oh, it's been good to being like, oh, my life's in shambles and I need prayer. Yeah. And um, and that's something that I'm really grateful for in my season of patience. Just like being like, oh, wow, I can pray for someone and I can tell them about hope. Yeah. And um, and then it teaches those people to be patient too. And yeah. then they're like, because I'm just like, I was patient. Look how I am now. I'm still patient, but I'm happy. And then they see that and they're just like, whoa, like that's weird, but that's cool. And I want that. And so... That's one thing I just wanted to mention about patience. That's something I've been learning. Yeah, and I, to your point, like that mm-hmm. patience looks so different for people. Yeah, it um, does. So it's not necessarily a prescribed way. And so that's cool. That's cool. I like it. What's up? Anyways, let's talk about culture because we're both Latinos. Latino. What's up? Where are you from originally? Uh, born and raised. Uh, it's funny. Uh, so I was born and raised in 
hello no but um <laughs> hello and what's up <laughs> um but people always when they hear me speak spanish like on youtube on video on youtube they're like how'd you learn spanish i'm like uh it's my first language yeah so uh, anyway to answer your question born and raised in la parents are from mexico and el salvador cool yeah my parents are chilean if no one knows that uh but i the okay so i used to actually speak spanish really well and it was my first language then I went to school, this elementary school, which I actually really enjoyed. Like nothing against them, except uh, the teacher that forced me to go take speech classes, because mm. I couldn't speak English and I couldn't pronounce like certain English words correctly. That they had to teach me how to use my tongue, and it screwed up everything in like speaking Spanish. Wow. So I know how to speak Spanish, but I sound like a gringo. It's crazy that they had you do that. So I Spanish was uh, I. When I went to elementary school, my, all my classes were in Spanish up until I think fourth grade. Really? In fourth grade is when I started learning English. Oh, or I like, hate you. Read, I think, I think third grade was bilingual. Fourth grade was more English heavy, and I had a hard time learning English. Dude, I'm so jealous but, of but you. But they didn't have me go to speech or like a. Dude, I'm so jealous of you because that's something like I just wish like my because my like my sister whenever we go to Chile. She goes, talks to everyone. She's like having a great time, getting her nails done, talking to strangers. And I can't even order a Fanta at the restaurant because I'm so embarrassed. Really? Yeah, because it's just like, can I have a Fanta? And they're like, oh, what'd you say? I'm like, Fanta. Like, you're from a different country, aren't you? I'm like, yes, I am. But I'm proud to be Chilean. So shut up and give me my Fanta. (laughs) But it's just like, it's just annoying because like, I guess it's just an aspect of like, I wish I was more like, like I'm, heart wise i'm in my culture like i love soccer i love the food i love everything that i experience within chilean culture Mm. i just wish i was like you know one of them you know like just like be a part of it again there's a certain beauty to it like i doesn't mean like i i'm unappreciative of my parents teaching me spanish because like man dude the fact that we can speak spanish opens up so many doors and not just to, to like spanish like I've seen you speak a little bit of Portuguese. You understand a little bit of Italian. It's just like, but it's true. Like, that's the thing that's crazy about Spanish is like, we're so blessed to know this language because it opens, it just makes traveling easier, easier. We communicate to so many other people around the world and it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You can go to Spain and Europe and that's really the only country, but Portugal, Brazil, you can go to Brazil, yeah. understand there. A little, yeah. You can go to Italy. I go to Italy and I understand a little bit. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that's the awesome aspect. And I'm so grateful my parents taught me Spanish. Yeah, I, 100. Yeah. What, do you think you're going to teach uh, Spanish to your kids? Um, it would be nice. Yeah, I would like to. Or do you think you're going to teach them Filipino? Or Tagalog? Both. Tagalog? Is that what it means? Is that the language? Sorry, yeah. I'm uncultured. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, I, I think we'll teach them both. And um, we'll just, we'll see mm-hmm. where it goes and... Really? That, yeah. Also, another question I just wanted to ask you is, what's one thing you're most, like, what's one of the most favorite things that you love about being Latino? I love that, you know, what's funny about, I think, for the most part, speaking Spanish is that if you meet someone, um, you're at a restaurant or wherever it is, and you just, you start speaking to them in Spanish, it's almost like your family. Yeah. Um, and That's so true. for the most part, I, I, my experience has always been very positive and it's like, oh, like, people are just so welcoming yeah um so that i think that would i would say that that's cool yeah that's actually that's something i really enjoy the most too like i remember one day i was with my roommate andrew and we were getting like our keys copied for the apartment and i was wearing like this soccer jersey from a south american country and this guy comes up to me like the guy who works at the you know desk is like oh so you like that team we start speaking spanish about the world cup and we're just like acting like we've known each other for like the longest time ever and then uh, and she's standing in the background. He's like, what are you guys talking about? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, the guy that counter is like, not about you. And then uh, <laughs> we kept on talking. And then she's just standing there. He had no time. Yeah, no, it was just funny. But yeah, I think one of the cool things about being Latino is like that, like the minute they see that you're Latino, they're like, oh, what's up? Like they, como estas? Como estas and todo eso. And, and that's, that's my favorite thing. I think one of the things I really appreciate about being Latino no shame against like other cultures or anything like that. I think many cultures around the United States uh, are very, especially South America, and I, I see it a lot with also Asia and even Africa. Um, it's like the aspect of family. So like when I whenever I fly to like the airport, right to to Chile, like okay, so here's a little thing. Like you see families out, and it, this is not everyone. I'm not saying this is everyone or anything like that, but I've yeah. noticed it a lot more. So like you go to the United States. People are like, oh, like, 
Oh, you're flying in from here? Okay, I'll just send you over an Uber and then you can come to the house and all that stuff. But like, if you're in like South America and you say you're flying in from somewhere, like your whole family comes and they're like with signs and they're with the kids. Really? Like, Yeah, and it's funny because <laughs> like, th- like half the family doesn't need to be there. Yeah, yeah, but they're yeah. just waiting out there because they're so excited. Obviously, like for me, like I live across the globe from them so whenever I have the chance to see them they're, I feel like a celebrity and all that stuff <laughs> but like uh, you see that a lot with like many other cultures like I, I mean I see it in the US but in other countries it's just like their culture is based around family mm. and the Latino culture is very based around family mm-hmm. lots of drama and family what's up and a lot of screaming yeah a lot of screaming yeah that's one of the things I like the most about it but yeah okay let's talk about cooking okay dude you're an amazing cook uh, I try. You I try? try. <laughs> Shut up, dude. You literally, this kid cooked for me. I'm like, this kid, you're like older than me. Wow. <laughs> but this kid cooked like every night for me in, um, at the house. Listen, I remember even trying to cook breakfast for him. Yeah. And he said no. Well, because I didn't want to like, you know, make yeah. you feel tired or anything like that. Let's talk about those days. Those days of living together. Yeah. What do you miss the most about that? Um... I can tell you what I don't miss. Okay, go for it. Go for it. Shoot, so, I'm ready. It's funny. It like it, he honestly he was such a, a, a good roommate and we had a, a, such a good experience. <laughs> You're gonna say he was honestly such a messy person. Uh, you know, I, and I think it's uh, you know this was for him the first time he was away from home. Yeah. Um, living with other people. Yeah. Um, and you know also given the circumstance you were in the living room versus having your own room yeah so it made it difficult and i think he did the best he knew he could yeah um so you know and, and it's funny because you it's it's crazy like even i experience this like you live with your parents forever or for however long and you learn to do ways th- the way they do it yeah um and whatever and so i remember like the first few times when i was leaving to go to the gym he at, at like 5 30 in the morning he'd wake up and say hey good morning and i'm like good morning or i didn't even say you wouldn't even say good morning you would just walk past that and be like oh that hurt a little bit yeah stung a little bit um not that i don't miss that i think it's funny because then he like realized uh i should just sleep and i yeah. think you eventually just were able to sleep through it yeah i slept through it and that's why i think i didn't never said anything i was like this boy needs to just sleep i'm trying to be all like calm and yeah coming down um I don't know. What and I'd still hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I I do miss coming home and, and seeing you and like just being able to oh. like we were because, you know, we were we became brothers. Yeah. And it's like we did almost everything together mm-hmm. uh, and just being in camaraderie. Um, what else? I think that would be I mean, essentially, we did everything together. Yeah, I, you I know, what, that. you know, one of the things I miss the most, actually, I miss um, the last night. We were there um, because uh, I remember we were all sitting around on the floor. It was like a little, what was it? Like an Ikea, a little mini Ikea desk. What were we eating upon? A box? Oh, no. I think it was one of the side tables, I think. Or was it a box? I think it was a box we or something In-N-Out, like that. Yeah. We had in and out and it's all four of us. It was me, Andrew, actually, mm-hmm. Pippa, and you. Mm-hmm. And we were just sitting down, down there. And it was like the last day we're moving out. We're picking up our stuff and we're eating in and out And we were just like pouring our hearts out to each other yeah that's one of my favorite memories like from that house a lot of other things i think one of the things i miss the most is like actually one of my honestly that last week was very memorable because i remember pippa being there and i broke the washing machine (laughs) i remember getting a text message hey i broke the washing machine and i was like what how do you break (laughs) and i was like okay so what are you doing thankfully the landlord was so cool about it really like there was no issues and yeah we just it's it, Dude, crazy. It started I, leaking into the second, the middle floor. Yeah, I remember because I think you I overloaded. I, I don't it, right? know if I have a video of it, but like, there's like a video. I, yeah, there's definitely a video. Yes. I don't know if I have it, but it's like you looking up, and just this water drizzling down in the bathroom, and Pippa just is like she's like you know has a bucket there and all that stuff. I remember that. That was like one of my favorite memories. Yeah, I was, not mine, but <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Let's talk about first impressions. What was your first impression of me? So I. I'm like, okay. let's make this podcast about me. Me, right? <laughs> so I met you um, th- first through Gabe through Snapchat. Yeah. And I remember... Oh, yeah. Yeah. That. And so I remember you you were just loud. and I, But to me, it didn't stand out because I guess you're Latino or... You met me during my unsafe days. <laughs> yeah. And I think... Um, I remember you being timid. 
Really? The first time I met you in person. So Sebastian had come out uh, in January of 2016. I don't know. Whatever year it was. And when was um, when was the tour? I have no idea. That was, it was last, last year. year. So last year. So yeah, 2016. Anyway, seventeen or sixteen, I don't know. Yeah. Um. So then he he came out, and I I think we had messaged each other on Instagram because I didn't have your number at that mm-hmm. point. And I was like, hey, we're going out if you want to come. Um. This is where I live, and we managed to have him come. And I remember I opened the door, and I was like, I was him in yeah. the sense like how loud I was because I was at that point I almost felt like I knew you. Yeah. And I was like, hey, what's up? And you were like, oh hey. Yeah. And I was like. Okay, cool. Hey, just welcome and like come in and. Dude, I remember how nervous I was meeting you, <laughs> and I was just like, "What the heck?" I, I th- there's two things I remember. There, uh, I remember there being at the other house right before I met you. I was just like, "You invited me that night, and you you tried to invite me like a couple of times to hang out, and I was like always busy." Because oh, yeah, when I was in New York, I you, went to New York twice. Yeah. You were in New York, and but I had finals during that time, mm-hmm. and that's why I couldn't hang out. Mm-hmm. And you always give the excuse, you're like, "No, you didn't." I was like, "Yes, I did. I had finals." Um, but there was other, t- this, while I was in LA, you were trying to, you were really trying to hang out. What's up? Just kidding. No. Um, but, <laughs> but mm-hmm. I remember being in the house and our friend, our mutual friend, Gabi, and I was like, I was so nervous. And this is, you know why, um, I actually, I'm very thankful for that experience is because this was the first time I actually got out of my comfort zone. Mm. Um, and it was through you and it gave me an affirmation. It was really seriously. I think it was the first time I ever got out of my comfort zone of hanging out with a stranger because I was so used to like being comfortable, knowing my college friends, never meeting new people. It's like just my community and that's it. And if I'm going to meet someone, it has to like be a really, I don't know how I, how I met people before, but anyways, um, yeah, I thought, I think I remember, I didn't uh, want to go. Yeah. I remember, I think. And then, and it's funny cause it was like, just, it was a guy's night. And, yeah. it, and so I think that was also another like thing because yeah. it wasn't just me, but then it was like, was it four other guys? Yeah. And you were just kind of, and I remember driving to where we were going and you were sat in the middle yeah. of two other people and it was just, it was funny, but I remember like you. I, from what I remember, you acclimated well, and I think you handled yourself well. I didn't remember like babying you, if you will. Okay. Um. So I, I, I thought, it, yeah, it was good. Dude, for me, I was just like, because I, all I remember, you were like talking about like Spain, that you went to Spain and like Europe. I was like, all right, asking questions about Europe because that's the only thing you know about him. So the whole ride, I'm like, how was Spain? I went to Barcelona. Oh, how was this place? Oh, this that, and it was just like all these weird conversations. I just tried my hardest to like keep up the conversation and I think you did well I remembered I, I thought I, n- I never said oh man this guy is really I'm really having to try yeah and I think just even towards the end of the night you were oh great. I let loose yeah and I remember we snapped we FaceTimed Gabe and he was like what the heck how come you guys are hanging out or, yeah and yeah. all that stuff and yeah. then I remember us walking through um what was the thing what's that place called um it's right next to downtown LA it's like the ghetto area of oh um, Skid Row. Skid Row. This fool decides oh, you to were, you were you were vlogging. Yeah, I was vlogging that. I think I have a video of it. Mm-hmm. I have a, dude, I, I think I think so I like you were using your phone. You were using your phone. And yeah, I think I did something to it and it fell. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this fool is like, all right, we're gonna go to this like cool rooftop bar in L.A. and all that stuff, and we're gonna like enjoy ourselves and enjoy the view and all that stuff. So I was like, awesome. He decides to park in Skid Row and like, mind you, like we're getting back to the car at like 1, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. We were out late this time and the whole time we're just like, Brian was like walking like totally fine. There's like people like really sketchy people out in the streets and I was just like, we're going to die. 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 I was like, why did I hang out with this kid? Why did I hang out with this kid? I was like, we're going to Welcome gonna to die. LA. I was like, yeah. And I was, you're like, welcome to LA. I was just like, I don't want to be here anymore. I was like, yeah. it was just weird. Um, but it was honestly, I think I learned a lot about being in my com- out of my comfort zone with you that first night mm-hmm. and it really opened the door of me being like, okay, I can meet anyone and I just got to be confident in my own identity. Mm. And that's something actually I want to talk about identity, right? Where do you find confidence? Uh, like where do you, where do you find your identity and uh, how do you build confidence upon your identity? Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> I think you have to just be comfortable with yourself. Um, 
And I think for me, honestly, I found my identity in Christ. I think um, before that, like I, I don't think I had anything. I don't, you know, I didn't have an older brother who could, mm-hmm. who could encourage me or anything like that. And so when I came to Christ, that really like for me, it helped me um, just go on that soul searching, if you will. Yeah. Um, and just really getting to know yourself and being comfortable in your own skin. And, you know, sometimes I think you get comfortable in your own skin and, and but you're also, uh, you have all these, um, uh, what are they called? Uh self uh defense mechanisms mm-hmm. where you uh can come across uh like tough but yeah. really you're being tough because you're, you're scared you're scared of being vulnerable or whatever mm-hmm. it is and so um i think i just over time uh you come to learn what you're worth and who you are and whose you are and like where sort of your hope comes from if you will yeah um and uh, I think that just came over time, over meeting several people. And again, I think having the right people. That's a building right aspect. Friends, yeah. You have to have the right people surrounding you. Um, How do you catch an eye for that? Uh, discernment, I think. And I think just, um, I don't know, just being just being aware, being self-aware. Mm-hmm. And then being aware of uh, how other people and how, like, how consistent they are. Yeah. Or how they treat others. And... Um, like who do you want to be like too also yeah. hanging out with people like that oh I want to be like making this up uh, Joe Schmo <laughs> and and like so then you I think you you sort of emulate that yeah you try and find people like this individual and do you think you knew your identity once you jumped into a relationship with Pippa uh, I had a better grasp yeah okay did you learn more about your identity once you were dating her totally and I think that, that that's what happens um, did you learn a lot more during the relationship or before um through before the relationship so like did you learn more about your identity before jumping into that relationship or did you learn a lot about I, yourself i in think the it's a constant thing you, okay. you're continually learning more about you because theoretically every year every month every day there's a bit of you that's changing that's being molded shaped and transformed by the mm-hmm. renewing of your mind it says in romans you know and so i think when you're in a relationship like um like uh your significant other or um, not significant that's I don't like anyway your your partner in the sense if you're dating someone there are going to be things that come up that you've not dealt with in the past or you'll see like maybe inconsistencies or you'll see things that you're like oh yeah wow this is how I am and, and I, I gotta work on it and I gotta work on that yeah and so I think that's the beauty about being in a relationship because mm-hmm. you will never find that level of intimacy like between us there is an ele- element yeah but there's more that goes with this person because you cultivate and create that safe space yeah and it's just it's different and i think through that it you get to experience god's love in a, such a different new way whoa dang that was really good <laughs> I'm about to tear up but no yeah i think you you find your identity it's a continual thing yeah that's cool um, and just running uh and yeah surrounding yourself so even okay for like the youth right like i think some this is something that we both went through um bullying right Mm. bullying is something where you where a lot of confusion uh is caused within your identity Mm. so in areas of bullying like at such a young age um how do you how do you how do you find confidence in your own identity through the bullying and and what people do you go to to build your identity if like you're because most of the time when kids get bullied it's funny but parents don't really understand why kids get bullied like yeah. you can't really go to your parents and be like hey mom and dad i'm getting bullied or anything like that and you can't go to a principal because then you're like a i'm gonna call the school and speak to skylar's mom yeah right but doesn't it i think it just goes to yeah I, sorry go I, so like with, well no it's totally fine but like even for someone who's dealing with bullying in high school right and uh i know we have our friends in high school and all that stuff but like how do you how do you find confidence in yourself? Because most of the time when you're getting bullied, you feel like you're by yourself. Mm. So how do you find confidence in yourself to not believe what other people are telling you? I remember when I was in elementary, I was being bullied. I told my mom and my mom was like, don't believe them. And it's not true what mm-hmm. they're saying. Um, and then when I went to middle school, I didn't really go out for help. I yeah. didn't really go to anybody. Me neither. Um, but I think it's because... I, I don't know why people don't like when you're being bullied and you internalize and I think that's why 
we see so many people doing things that they shouldn't be doing, whether that's drugs or whatever, because they try and find a vice. They try and find a way out yeah. um, where you can simply, whether that's a therapist or even starting at, at um, with a friend. Because sometimes like I think what happens is sometimes like, and I think this is what's awesome about the, the church is that you have uh, an extended community and family. Yeah. So you can go to your pastor, you can go to your um, mentor. So you could have come to me if I was a, a youth worker, you could have asked me and then we could have talked to it. I could have involved the pastor. And so there's those sort of steps or filters that you have through uh, community in a church, um, which I think is so crucial. Uh, but for me, I never really told anybody that I was being bullied once past uh, elementary Um what was your question? Oh, how do you how do you find confidence in your own that. identity uh, when you're by yourself and you don't really have people to go to? I think that happened until I was older, and honestly, like, honestly, like for me, it was God's grace and salvation and cool. coming to to faith uh, that really helped me uh, really sort of stay strong and just push through. Um, but you know, through that, there's an element. There's then a minutia of things that if you don't deal with it, then it can become an issue in your older years. Mm -hmm. Um, But that for me was really my saving grace. Well, that's awesome. I'll tell you my answer too. So for my answer, my answer actually kind of relates a little bit to to your answer um, in different aspects. You said one one thing you mentioned was by the grace of God that like you didn't do anything. Same goes for me. When I went when I was getting bullied, like I've I've mentioned this in my testimony. I had suicidal thoughts. uh, As did I. And like lots of just awful experiences, like just really just like things like I got spit on in high school. Mm. I got bullied, like pushed into the lockers. I got booed at in my, you know, senior year, all that stuff. It's crazy. It's the worst, dude. Like, it's, people, I don't know why people, it's like, uh, that's so hard to hear. I can't, and like, you, it's, yeah, anyway, sorry. Go no, ahead. no, keep on going. No, it's just, it's sad. It's sad. It breaks my heart. And it breaks my heart because like people, think it's like a cinematic thing like a hollywood thing like that's the only thing that happens in hollywood like that type of bullying no it actually happens like like for me like i had to go to uh my i wrote us i already wrote this in my my i said this in my testimony i'm not afraid to talk about my past because i think my art past can be a, an amazing tool to give hope to others mm. um but like in my like i remember being in high school and i was getting bull- bullied in the spanish class and this kid just went all at it like just said these awful things like racist things racist remarks uh threatened to like kill and all that stuff and i just remember crying over my desk writing out my suicide letter and just being like there's no point in life and the thing is like when you're that young you don't realize how much more like there are better days out there and there's not many people that are there to tell you like because like you're so young and you're not you don't really have a for me like i didn't even have a relationship with christ yet at that age so i didn't know who to turn to um, yeah. and even one of the things I really find awesome that you mentioned, it's like, you know, community, like you, you mentioned community, right? Like you have to build a punk community. You know, it's not just about your community. Isn't just the people that are in your school. Right. And then just your family, you have the choice at a very young age to make, to build upon your own community, whether that's mm-hmm. going to church, whether that's joining a club, whether that's going, you know, adding, you know, being part of a sport or something like that. Like mm-hmm. those are your communities that you can go to outside of like, because you're not you're not stuck with that bullying community. You don't have to be stuck with that yeah. bullying community. Yeah. You're gonna have to deal with it because that's like I mean you're in school. You have to go to school, but you have the choice to build other communities. And one of the things I did when I was getting bullied, even though I even got bullied for it too, was the YouTube community. Like my thing was like my favorite thing about YouTube was that I was able to create my like be okay with my own identity in YouTube because no one knew who I was. Mm-hmm. And I had the cam. It was just me and the camera, and I could just be myself. I could speak out. Sure, my videos are cringy. Like I look back at my videos, I'm just like, <laughs> this, that is not who I am. I don't know who that person is. Yeah. And delete, 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 delete. But even at those times, like I found, I was able to build my identity, and I was able to be proud of who I was. And um, and there are people. I swear to you, I promise to you, there are people that are going to relate to you, that are going to understand your story, that are going to be your friend, and it doesn't just have to be like your your outreach doesn't just have to be stuck in school it can be anywhere and that's the beauty about having the internet especially people their age like we grew up like you grew up with the internet i grew up with like like the social media like you grew up like with the internet actually like 
becoming something and i grew up sorry i didn't even say it that way <laughs> but like and then i was very lucky to grow up with like social media like when social media finally like blew up yeah. and all that stuff which just makes it harder yeah i can only imagine dude yours was probably hard because like well i i mean also my aspect too was a little hard because i got bullied on social media too yeah see we didn't have i didn't have that i had chat rooms but i don't know that i ever got bullied i remember being like there was this thing called the loop which was an audio chat room essentially yeah. you'd call as like landline you yeah know what that is you'd <laughs> call and then you would just somehow you would be put into this pool and sometimes you can do a private chat mm-hmm. with a group of people and i remember someone once just called me something racist and i was like well that's not who i am yeah and so i think it's also power it's that's the power it's like that's not who i am yeah and so sometimes it's like there's a think a, a psychology term you know the self-fulfilling prophecy that someone will say for example making this up you're ugly and you keep hearing that and then you believe you're ugly until you say no i am not those things and and i think the very important thing even in a situation like that it's like to recognize it immediately like please like make the choice to recognize it immediately and don't believe it because yeah i'll dude i'll admit to it now like i just dude i'm i'm 22 years old right now and i'm just getting over bullying from high school because i was believing all these things that people told me from high school and it's something that you know you could say oh i let go of it like i'm fine sure like you got over that season but subconsciously there are a lot of things that you still hold dear to your heart that you believe and you say you don't believe it but when the time when the times are tough and when you want to take a step forward, those lies that you heard back in high school can still hold you back from stepping forward into God's calling. Mm. And so um, that's something I've been even learning now that like if you if someone's telling you a lie now, if someone's telling you like, hey, this is who you are and it's not who you are, make the choice to not believe it. Like go up to the people yeah. that you look forward to that you look up to go up to the community that respect you for who you are and ask them who what who you are and not who not just them but ask god like go to the bible the bible is literally the one book that where god tells you who you are you know that's a one book yeah. where that's where you're able to reveal a lot about yourself and yeah. reveal all his like callings and purpose and and missions for you and all that stuff sorry so i'm like good. getting no, no, passionate no. no that's good and that's so true and it's it's just it's 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 heartbreaking because I mean I'm I'm grateful that I I learned I learned it you know at uh at my you know at the end of my teenage years and my early twenties and all that stuff I'm still in my early twenties and all that stuff but like it's like I'm so grateful that I had you I had Jess and Gabriel uh, that taught me that at an age where I was at my worst like you guys met me when I was like you know partying and like I remember it's community it's it's community and it's choosing to, and it's choosing your community because. At the end of the day, like tell me who like if you tell me who you're hanging out with and I'll tell you your future. And um and that's something I just I hope you guys can just take advantage of. Like just having the discernment to to know that whatever lies people are telling you that's not true. Yeah. And uh you have the choice to build your community. Even at a young age, you still have the choice. Yeah, it's true. Dang. It's true. I'm gonna shut up now. <laughs> Dang, I appreciate okay. that. Okay. Okay, what's listen, that? listen. This is just you, dude. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's so good. No, no, no. I'm sorry. So true. I don't have anything else to say. I completely agree. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Wow, I didn't even realize like how that came out and stuff. I was just like <laughs> speaking off. Listen, I was just looking at you. Okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. Dude. Okay, okay, pastor. Oh, sorry. <laughs> anyways, well, anyways, Brian, thank you for being part of the podcast. Thanks for having me. Is there anything else you want to mention? Because I feel like I talk more than you do. Um, are you gonna have my fiance on here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I told. Did Pippa tell you? Listen, I don't know. I she, want to. Okay. She's so good at talking. Yeah, she is. She's. Listen, you. You. For I am flattered that you would think I'd give you potentially good answers. This woman, she. Praise the Lord. She is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Praise so. the Lord for Pippa. That's honestly, she's DTL. awesome. And I think the one time I actually got to know her was, well, whenever you were at work, like she, <laughs> it was just me and her the whole time. Yeah. And obviously like she'd be working or something like that. Like she was still working at the time and I was like editing videos. But there was this one day where both of us were like, she's like, Sebastian, let's grab a drink up on the roof. Let's eat some burgers or whatever food we made. And let's just talk. Mm. And I was like, cause we were both working and I was like, all right, fine, let's do it. And then I just got to really get to know her. And it was one of my favorite, that's also one of my favorite moments in the apartment, the old place. Being on the rooftop, on that little small table that we had oh. with two chairs, looking I out, place, yeah. I miss that place so much. And just looking out in the good weather, having some good food, and just like really investing time in each other and getting to know each other. 
And that's why I love, dude, I love Pippa. Like, she's so awesome. Like, dude, she she's like, I, I, I'm like her number one fan. <laughs> I'm her number one fan. Number two, me first. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're, you're number one. I'm number two. What's up? Yeah, yeah. Pippa, if you're watching this, I'm your number two fan. What's up? Number one. We have a fan club. It's called Pippa's Awesome. Uh, <laughs> and it's, uh, it's pretty dope. Pippa rocks. She does. She do. Yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, sorry. To my sorry. future wife. What's up? If you're watching this, <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, is there anything you want to plug or anything you want to say into the, in the podcast or anything yeah, like that? Any last remarks? Thanks for having me. It's, a, it's been a pleasure. I hopefully gave you some good answers, dude. This is a good podcast. It's a very good podcast. And thanks I'm very for watching. Grateful. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching. Oh, by the way, by now I'm I'm at forty thousand subscribers. So listen, let's. Go. I remember, like honestly, like the way that, um, and I think this is what happens, like when you like take a leap of faith like you left new york to come to la and you just and that's patience like, yeah it took you a while i remember you'd be you know like oh my gosh i just want to be this this and yeah. youtube and like it's been a substantial growth and mm-hmm. it's like like so proud of you so and i'm thank you i appreciate that i'm thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> but honestly i'm actually very grateful for that and uh i'm still being patient like it's not like you know yeah. the growth is happening at least you know and that's and it, it's about recognizing the blessings at the moment if you're not able to recognize the blessings right now then you're never going to be prepared for what god's trying to hand you in the near future it's in the small things it's in the small things especially mm-hmm. and you know forty thousand isn't small for other people it could be small in the youtube so you know social media world but i'm grateful it's a huge think of it i have forty thousand people that i have the opportunity to either mentor to inspire to to speak to and I have the opportunity to speak life to you guys. And that's yeah. the only thing I want to do. And so this shows that podcast time is over. And thank you for watching. We'll see you guys soon. Brian, I'm going to leave his... Um, Is this still going? Come on. All right. Anyways, Brian, thank you for being part of the podcast. Um, I'll leave all his links down below if you guys want to watch any of his videos, any of his vlogs. You got to get back to vlogging, man. I miss your vlogs, man. I will. And, um, and then that's pretty much it. So... Do you know how I say goodbye? Because no one knows how I say goodbye. How do you say goodbye? What do I always do? Hey. Yeah, exactly. What's up? Let's go. <laughs> All right. In three, two, one. See you guys later. Hey. <laughs> What's up? Let's go.